welcome to First Baptist Church this morning in our time of musical worship and celebration. We're glad you're here. I see a number of guests and visitors with us this morning. Take one of the guest cards you see in the hymnal rack before you and fill that out and return it to us during our time of offering this morning. It is a day of joy and celebration. I want to give you a few little cues here. When you see the slide that we had the first one there, the all red with the snowflakes and it has a song title, that means the choir is going to sing that number. Ronnie, would you go to the next slide? When you see this, that means the choir is going to sing. Now, Ronnie, go to the next slide with Joy to the World. And you see these slides, that means it's congregational singing. Whenever you see the slide with the Christmas balls and the red background, we want to ask you to stand and sing with the choir during those songs. So I'm going to ask you to stand now as we're going to begin in a moment singing Joy to the World. And as you stand, I'm going to light the candle of joy, symbolizing our joy in Christ on this beautiful morning. city of David. He took Mary with him, she being at the time great with child. While they were there, Mary brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men of good will.
scripture this morning comes from John 4, verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water, I, whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of well water, welling up to eternal life. If you'd join me in prayer, please. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that we gather together to celebrate the, the birth of your son and, and our Savior. We thank you for all of the families that are participating in this celebration, for everyone that's here. We ask a special blessing on all those who are, are here to, uh, to watch our program and those participating and all the visitors that have, have come to see these uh, children. We just pray a special blessing, Lord, on, on the message that's being conveyed today. And we'd also, Lord, ask your blessings on this offering that we're about to receive, that it be used in accordance with your will. I ask for these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him. Herod privately called the wise men and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search for the young child. And when you have found him, Bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy.
the touch of our Father, Jesus, the Son of God, our friend and our shepherd, our hope and our brother. I share with you a story this morning that I am first hesitant to share because it reveals a great deal about me, but I have a hunch I'm not the only one who can relate to this story. When I was young, a child, a student, newly married, I thought Christmas dinner was free. I showed up at people's houses when and where I was told, and I looked for something that I like, and I thought that everything at the table was free. But I've discovered a little later in life that this uh, feasting season we have here in America, this time between Thanksgiving and New Year's, where it seems that we get together and eat all the time, is expensive. Thanksgiving dinner is expensive. You've got office parties, school parties, church activities, social gatherings, and Christmas dinner, and then all the snacks that you buy for New Year's Day games. It's expensive. One year, our family said to us, let's have have Christmas at Stacy and Debbie's house. And we said yes, and my first worry was how early will they come and how late will they stay? But my wife went to the store and she came in and she said, I need help with the groceries. And I went to her car and the back seat was full of groceries and the trunk was full of groceries. And then there was this bag full of paper that I carried in. And I thought, well, maybe they were having a special on ribbon. We carried in the sack full of paper and it was the receipt. (laughs) I about melted in the floor. I said, hey, baby, what's this? And she said, well, it's for Christmas dinner. And I said, and she's sitting up here, I hope smiling. And I said, wait a minute. And she said, no, that's the way it works when you have it at your house. And I said, well, nobody told me this is how it works when you have it at your house. And I took the receipt downstairs, and I tried to enter it into the Quicken program. And I entered the numbers into the Quicken program, and the computer said, are you sure? (laughs) And I did. And then I entered it, and there was a call from the bank. And I thought, this is too much. And then here's where it really gets embarrassing for me. Christmas Day came, and one of our relatives showed up with a bowl of Jell-O. Do you know how much a bowl of Jell-O costs to make? I went into the kitchen to my wife and I said to her, I said, I said, she showed up with a bowl of jello. It cost a nickel. And here we've got all of this. And she, my wife, very calmly and very patiently looked me straight in the eye and with a carving knife in my nose said, Shut up. <laughs> it's Christmas Day. Enjoy it. I said, Enjoy it. We're going to bankruptcy here. Because food is expensive. And especially during this feasting season, 
But you have your Bibles this morning open to Isaiah chapter 55. I read to you words of hope. Yo, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. What do you spend your money for? That which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good and delight yourselves in the rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call to the nations that you do not know. And nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for He has gloried in you. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts and let them return to the Lord that He may have mercy on them and to our God, for He will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He begins that passage of scripture, the prophet does, speaking to Babylonian exiles who have been in Babylon two generations. And some of them have become comfortable in Babylon. They've got jobs, they've got property, they've got house, they've got roots, and they're not interested in going back. And the prophet says to them, come and eat. Those of you with no food, come and buy. No money, come and buy food, buy bread, buy milk, buy wine. It's free. And he says to them, this will satisfy you unlike any other. And then there's that passage that you can't read earlier from John where Jesus said, If you drink this water out of this well, you'll be thirsty again. But if you drink the water I give to you, you'll never thirst again. It is the promise of the prophet and of the Son of God, Jesus, that if you drink from the promises of Him, you'll never be thirsty. He goes on in this prophecy to give to the people other promises. He says, I'm going to establish an everlasting covenant with you and your King David. And from now on, People will look to the King David and they will know that you are loved and you are loved by God and they'll come to you asking the source of your joy. And then he changes. And he speaks a personal word to them and he says, the Lord God will forgive you whatever it is. He says he'll pardon you abundantly. He says, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, whatever you've caused, the Lord will forgive. Whatever has happened in your life, the Lord will erase. And then that famous line, those eight and nine there, the words highlighted in these scriptures. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Now, most of the time when you hear that phrase, It is someone trying to turn a negative into a positive. It is someone in a hospital with a difficult diagnosis saying, well, God's ways are not our ways. It's someone in a funeral home during visiting hours seeking in a moment of tragedy trying to say, well, our ways are not God's ways. That's not the point. That's not what the prophet is saying. The prophet is saying, whatever you've done, You can have abundant pardon. Whatever your sin, you can be forgiven. Whatever is in your life can be restored. Our ways are not God's ways. You see, we're we're eye for an eye people. We're tooth for tooth people. It's in us to find revenge. It's in us to hold on to a grudge and never forgive. 
God says, I extend to you unlimited pardon. And he says, I'll prove it to you by giving you my son. Born to a common man and a common woman. Living in a very common place. Nazareth. Nazareth is a place that is so poor that in all of the archaeological digs around Nazareth, they can't even find a nice piece of pottery. It is so poor, they have yet to find a nice piece of silverware. It is so poor, they didn't have a city hall, they didn't have a county office, they didn't have an official building of any kind. And yet in this place of common folks, you have a man doing a very noble task of being a carpenter in this, name, this people. And their son, the son of God, born in this commonness, rose to become a man. A man who came to speak to us the words that God would speak, and he said things like, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And he said the words of the prophet that there is abundant pardon and abundant mercy in God's Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, we paid him back by mocking him, beating him, spitting on him, crucifying him, and burying him. But in spite of all that, there is abundant mercy. Would you pray with me this morning? Our Heavenly Father, in this celebration of Christmas, we recognize that you have sent your Son to come to forgive us, to give us a way, Father, from unrighteousness to righteousness to provide for us an abundance of your love and your feast that quenches our soul, that gives meaning to our lives. And Father, we're grateful that in this day that we hold on to the promise that we can come to you confessing our sins and you take that sin and you separate it as far as the east is from the west and it is never again mentioned in your, your word. Father, we thank you for this abundant pardon that forgives us of absolutely everything. Because your ways are not our ways. We rejoice in the goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity this morning to respond to the call of the gospel in your life to hear the call of Jesus Christ in your life, that you can be forgiven of everything. You can accept Him as Savior and your sins would be removed with abundant mercy. We extend to you the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning. We give you a chance to respond. You're here looking for a church home? Come and join with us. If you have a need in your life, I'll be here. We'll pray together. Whatever the need in this moment, let's stand is the choir leads us in our song of commitment, and you respond to the call of the gospel in your heart. In the hills of Judea, the long shepherds watch, hope is gone, there is no call for singing. Then the angels proclaim that a Savior is born, heaven's watch echoes sweet. Zion's ringing.